Right in the heart of Beijing, it was the home of emperors for 500 years. It has witnessed China's major political events during imperial times and ever since. The Forbidden City, its 900 halls and palaces, constitute the largest wooden building complex in the world. And its palace museum houses a vast collection of imperial artworks and artifacts from Ming and Qing times. Watch the Forbidden City on Journeys in Time. The September 18th incident of 1931 had not long taken place when, on November the 10th, Pui left Tianjin for Changchun, then under the occupation of Japanese troops. On March the 9th, 1932, he signed the traitorous Japanese Manchu Protocol, through which he became the emperor of the puppet state of Manchu Corps. Cultural relics that Pui had taken out of the Forbidden City that still remained were carried from Tianjin to Changchun and placed in the storehouse of a building known as Small White Mansion. Meanwhile, the newly established Palace Museum was preparing to shift cultural relics to the south to ensure their safety due to the reality of the deteriorating overall situation. Preparatory work had started shortly after the September 18th incident and had been going on for more than a year. A few days before the cultural relics of the Forbidden City were loaded and transported to the south, Wu Ying, secretary to the curator, was appointed as the man to escort the first batch of cultural relics. Many people were worried about this first planned shift of so many national treasures from the Forbidden City, with some even attempting to prevent the move by force. On the night of February 5th, 1933, a large number of carts entered the Forbidden City, where, on the square in front of the Gate of Divine Prowess, the cultural relics were loaded onto them before leaving for the railway station through Meridian Gate. Now, Juliang, a staff member of the Palace Museum, later recalled what took place that night. It was very quiet. No sound could be heard, except some noises from the carts. Nobody talked or sang. It was a desolate scene. Nobody knew when the national treasures would be brought back. The next morning, a train loaded with cultural relics moved out of the major railway station in Peiping, starting the largest and longest shift of cultural relics in human history.
The train passed Zhangzhou and Shuzhou before reaching Pukou in Nanjing. After they arrived in Pukou, staff members of the Palace Museum had to look for a depot for the cultural relics. At the time, Na Jiuliang said that they were carrying a coffin to find a graveyard. Wu Ying, who was in charge of escorting these cultural relics, asked for instructions from the Nanjing government and even talked to its president, Lin Sen, but to no avail. Song Ziwen then又出差了,杨森就说,你们怎么这么快就压过来了。结果,吴英说的是国民政府让我们压过来,才压过来的,压过来运到哪儿,你们应该安排地方的。Half a month later, T.V. Sung returned to Nanjing from Shanghai and called a meeting. It was decided in mid-March that documents and archives should be retained in Nanjing, while the rest of the cultural relics should be transferred to Shanghai. Over a period of more than three months, another four batches of cultural relics were transported to Shanghai and placed in the storehouse of a Catholic church in the French concession. Among the 19,000 boxes of cultural relics, 13,000 had come from the Forbidden City. These oriental treasures stayed here safely for four years under the protection of the Western concession. September the 26th, 1936, saw the completion of a storehouse belonging to the Palace Museum in Nanjing, and later the Nanjing branch of the Palace Museum was established. Ma Hung succeeded Yi Peiji as curator and took charge of the southbound shift of cultural relics. Those stored in Shanghai were transferred to Nanjing, but then, just half a year later, they had to be moved again. On July the 7th, 1937, the Lugo Bridge incident took place and the Japanese began their full-scale aggression against China. On August the 13th, Japanese began to bomb Shanghai. Nanjing was in imminent danger. The national government in Nanjing ordered the Palace Museum to immediately transfer the cultural relic stored in Nanjing westward to the vast rear area. Some 80 boxes of cultural relics were carried to Changsha by water and then by land along the south route. 9,000 boxes were shipped to Chongqing by water along the central route and 7,000 boxes were transferred to Baoji by land along the north route. The south route consignment of cultural relics began first, but by the time the transfer of those along the central and north route started, the Japanese had already occupied Shanghai and had begun to bomb Nanjing. The last batch of cultural relics was to be shipped along the central route, but no Chinese ship was available. The escort, Niel Derming, asked the captain of a British vessel to help ship the cultural relics to Hankou. A year later, the central route consignment of cultural relics finally reached Chongqing. 
When Chongqing was bombed, the cultural relics were safe in Angu Township in Lushan. The shift of cultural relics along the north route proved to be more perilous. Japanese bombers came just as the train carrying cultural relics reached Zhangzhou. Just ten days after the departure of the cultural relics, Japanese troops occupied Nanjing and committed the atrocious Nanjing Massacre. After the South Route consignment of cultural relics reached Changsha, they were stored in the library of Hunan University. A plan had been made to dig a cave in the hill near Evening Enjoying Pavilion to store these cultural relics, but the Japanese began to bomb Changsha before the plan could be carried out. This meant that the cultural relics had to be moved yet again. A week later, the library of Hunan University was razed to the ground and Evening Enjoying Pavilion was destroyed in the bombing. The South Route consignment of cultural relics avoided disaster and reached Anshuan in Guizhou province where they were stored in a cave for six years until they were transferred to Baxian County in Sichuan province. The North Route consignment of cultural relics, however, remained in Baoji for less than three months. As this city was also being bombed by enemy planes, they had to be transferred westward. <laughs> The North Route consignment avoided the enemy's bombing and was carried across the Qinling Mountains. Now Zhe Liang recalled, it was snowing when the trucks set off. Very soon the road was covered with snow. The tires of our trucks had to be fitted with iron chains and everybody trembled with fear. The North Route consignment of cultural relics was moved from place to place over a period of more than a year before reaching Erme in Sichuan province via Hanzhong and Chengdu. The Palace Museum established an office in Erme. <laughs> Giant Buddha temple where the cultural relics were stored can no longer be found, but the big banyan tree is still standing at the gate as a witness to what took place in those days.
Of the 13,000 boxes of cultural relics moved out of the Forbidden City, a small percentage was retained in Nanjing, while the lion's share was shifted safely to the vast rear area. Over a period of more than five years, staff members of the Palace Museum carried these national treasures across most of China, yet not a single piece was lost or damaged. What they achieved was a miracle in the world history of cultural relics. As the cultural relics were being shifted westward, the Japanese were entering the Forbidden City. A report stated that the Japanese lifted 66 bronze jars, 4 bronze guns, and 91 bronze lantern stands that could not be dated, and took them to smelting furnaces in Tianjin to make weapons. Fortunately, most of them were recovered after the victory of the War of Resistance. During the War of Resistance, Puyi was living in the Puppet Imperial Palace in Changchun. On August the 8th, 1945, however, the Soviet Red Army entered northeast China and Puyi prepared to flee to Japan. But due to haste, he took only some 120 calligraphic works and paintings and some jewellery out of a small white mansion. Three days later, he was captured by the Soviet Red Army in Shenyang, and the cultural relics he had with him were handed to the Northeast China Museum, the predecessor of present-day Liaoning Museum. Today, the number of such cultural relics preserved at Liaoning Museum is second only to the number preserved in the Palace Museum. Maids of Honour Wearing Flowers in Their Hair by Zhou Feng, a painter of the Tang Dynasty, and Meng Dian script by Ou Yang Xuan, a calligrapher of the Tang Dynasty, are rare treasures and the pride of the Anning Museum. Shortly after Pui left Small White Mansion, a large number of cultural relics he had left there were looted by his guards. As a result, Many calligraphic works and paintings were damaged, and the rest fell into private hands. Only three works by Li Gunglin, a painter of the Northern Song Dynasty, had been handed down to the present age. They were five horses, reproduction of Wei Yan's painting Pasturing Horses, and three horses. The painting, Three Horses, was torn to pieces in the looting. Liu Li Chang Street in Beijing had become a cultural market as far back as the Qianlong period, but it reached a height of prosperity after the victory of the War of Resistance due to the fact that many calligraphic works and paintings that had been seized from small white mansion were turning up here. Antique dealers referred to them as goods from the Northeast. Duke Wen of Jin revived the state, a painting by Li Tang of the Southern Song Dynasty, was bought by a private collector who later donated it to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. These goods from the Northeast were collected by at least six museums in the United States with over 430 pieces being collected by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York alone. As the cultural relics taken by Pui were being carried from place to place, the three consignments of cultural relics that had been shifted westward to the vast rear area were being transferred back to Nanjing. However, on the eve of the founding of the People's Republic, Chiang Kai-shek ordered the shipment of these cultural relics to Taiwan. 
Between December the 22nd, 1948 and February 1949, a total of 2,972 boxes of cultural relics were shipped to Taiwan. And while these boxes accounted for just one quarter of all those shifted southward from the Forbidden City, their contents were among the best. Today, the cultural relics evacuated from the Palace Museum are stored separately on both sides of the Taiwan Straits. And some of those who escorted the national treasures to Taiwan have never returned to the mainland. With the support of the government, cultural relics retained in Nanjing were carried back to the Palace Museum. In 1952, a policy was formulated to help facilitate the collection of cultural relics that had been taken out of the Forbidden City and later found at Liu Lichang and other places in China. As a result, more cultural relics were transferred from other museums to enrich the collection of the Palace Museum. In time, the painting, the Festival of Pure Brightness on the River and other cultural relics returned to the Palace Museum, many of them as donations from individuals. The names of those who have donated cultural relics to the Palace Museum can be seen on the walls in the Palace of Benevolence. One of the names is that of Zhang Boju, a prominent collector of his time. His script on recovery by Lu Ji of the Eastern Jin Dynasty is generally acknowledged as the earliest masterpiece of calligraphy in the form of a scroll. Zhang Boju stitched it in his underclothes and wore it all day so the Japanese would not find it. And after the founding of the People's Republic, he donated it, along with seven other treasures, to the Palace Museum. In 1951, at a time when China was still in financial difficulties, Premier Zhou Enlai approved the purchase of Bo Yuan script and mid-autumn script from Hong Kong at the cost of 480,000 yuan in foreign exchange. These works are two of the three treasures preserved in the Hall of Three Treasures in the Forbidden City. But since that time, yet more cultural relics taken from the Forbidden City and out of China have been reacquired from overseas. In 1995, the Palace Museum bought back 10 odes by Zhang Xian of the Northern Song Dynasty at a cost of 18 million yuan. And in 2003, it bought back Ode to the Sending Out of Troops of the Sui Dynasty, the earliest extant piece of calligraphy in China, at a cost of 22 million yuan. Over the past 50 years and more, about 240,000 cultural relics have been newly collected by the Palace Museum. With a collection of 1.5 million articles, the Palace Museum is truly a treasure house of intellectual wealth and human arts. The Palace Museum, with its multitude of treasures, 
is a carrier of an age-old civilization and a witness to the many vicissitudes of the centuries. And each of the cultural relics here has a tale of its own, perhaps tragic, perhaps peculiar, perhaps intricate. The fate of each one marks the rise and fall of various dynasties in Chinese history. Right in the heart of Beijing, it was the home of emperors for 500 years. It has witnessed China's major political events during imperial times and ever since. The Forbidden City, its 900 halls and palaces constitute the largest wooden building complex in the world. And its palace museum houses a vast collection of imperial artworks and artifacts from Ming and Qing times. Watch the Forbidden City on Journeys in Time.